Hello, my friend, how are you doing? Um, just want to show really quickly how you can do a factor analysis in SPSS. Um, to explain the, the details of factor analysis, I think goes beyond the scope of this video. This video is more to show how you can do it in the software. Um, if you want to know more details, um, the book that I would always recommend to my students is Discovering Statistics Using IBM SPSS by Andy Field. Discovering Statistics by Andy Field. Um, and in fact, this data set which I'm using here is a teaching resource um, from the book that you can also download it online. Um, as I said, it's beyond the scope of this video to explain what the test is about. But nevertheless, on a nutshell, on a very strong nutshell, um, essentially it's like imagine imagine if you have a questionnaire that you have multiple variables and you want to know how these variables can fit together to form particular factors. Um, or, for example, also in marketing, when you use a number of different scales and to measure particular factors like trust, attitude, and so on, and each of these factors have multiple items, and you want to know how well each of these items are loading um, together to form that particular factor. So these are some examples of how we use them in marketing, okay? But again, if you want to know more details, have a look into Discovering Statistics by Andy Field. But anyway, let's see how you can do this here in the software. You would start by clicking on Analyze, scroll down to Dimension Reduction. So Analyze, scroll down to Dimension Reduction, and then Factor, which is the first option. So click there on Factor. Okay, so this window here pops up. This data set which I'm using has 23 um, variables related to anxiety when um, studying statistics or having a statistics exam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of the items that I have here. I'll select all of the items and I'm going to drag to this um, space here of variables. And the first thing which I'm going to do is click on extraction. I could go click on the straight on OK and you will get some results based on the um, uh, default settings that you have in SPSS. But um, I want to show a few things here. And the first one is clicking on extraction. Because what happens is, remember, SPSS is trying to get these variables um, together to form particular factors. And it's really hard to explain this superficially, but on a nutshell is the, the way, the method in which you're going to do this to in order to get these, um, um, these factors um, together. So it's the way in which the SPSS is extracting these particular factors. And if you click here in the um, in a, in the scroll bar, um, you have different ways in which you can um, do this. And the principal axis factoring is um, the most common one that that is often um, used. So we're going to click on on that. There's a few options here that I would suggest. The first one is clicking on screen plot, because what happens is if you click on screen plot, once you get your results, it's going to give you a um, a graph in which you're going to have the eigenvalue, which I'm going to explain in a minute, and you're going to have in the bottom the number of factors. And it's also a way of, of identifying the number of factors that is going to be formed that you can explain most of the variance based on the um, the variables that you have. Okay, So I'll ex it's going to make more sense once we have the result from this, but I suggest clicking on screen plot. Then we have it on the extractions here based on eigenvalue. Eigenvalue is um, essentially, it's like a measure that um, SPSS is going to give you that um, can show like the importance of a factor or how much variance a particular factor can explain. So usually you use the default value of one. So all of the factors that have a value over you, uh, one or above one, you can you will see that it can explain well some of the variance. So um, uh, yeah, so I'll leave it like this is based on the eigenvalue and eigenvalue of one. Again, all the values above one will explain a lot of the variance and it was going to also make more sense when you see the results. So click on continue. Then we have the rotation, um, clicking here on rotation. So basically, once the um, uh, SPSS forms the factors, the rotation is a way of 
of maximizing the potential or the explanation of each of these factors. Um, I know it's weird to explain like this, but um, for, for more details, have a look into ND Fields, discovering statistics. You're going to know in fine detail what that means. But again, essentially, it's a way of trying to maximize uh, or enhance the potential of the factors explaining some of the variance. And um, in marketing, just as in psychology, when you measure different factors, like I said, um, attitude and satisfaction and so on, these factors, they are, they are in a way interrelated. And because of this, um, with oblique rotation, you look for also a bit of the correlation between these factors. Um, so usually in, in marketing, very common, um, you would use for oblique rotation, so clicking here on direct, or blaming for the oblique rotation, when these factors, they there tend to be a correlation between them. Um, having said that, Varimax is also a very common uh, type of rotation which is used, but beyond the scope of the example that I want to show you here. Okay. Um, so yeah, so clicking there on the oblique rotation, going into continue. If you click on scores, that's where um, the factor analysis will give you factor scores. But for this example here, it doesn't really matter. You can click on saving as variables, so it's going to save automatically as variables. But in the example here, it's not really relevant. Click on continue, and then you can click also on options. Now, the first thing in option here is how you deal with missing values. So the first option here is to um, exclude cases where you have uh, missing values so essentially it's going to exclude the one the uh, the cases um you can exclude it pairwise or you can also replace it with um the main uh, for this example we'll leave it with excluding the cases list wise um here with the, co the coefficient display format this is actually really important i would definitely click on sorted by size because it helps with the visualization it's going to have a there'll be a, a table in the end with the output that if you click here and sort it by size, then you're gonna see exactly, really clearly the um, the uh, the um, the factors. So that's quite relevant. The one suppress small coefficients. That's also an important one because basically, whenever you have variables that have very low loading, um, then it will exclude. Um, there are different uh, guidelines as to how authors would use them. Um, Personally, I would suggest using as a, um, uh, uh, how to say, like a, a, um, a reference of 0.3. So the loadings over 0.3, they will be used. The ones below 0.3, they're not going to be um, used and they're going to be suppressed. So you, you, it may happen that you're going to have variables within your questionnaire that all of a sudden on your results, they will sort of disappear. But they might disappear because um, if they have values below 3, which is the benchmark that I'm going to use here. Okay. So I'm going to click on continue, going to click on OK, and I shall have some results. So let's have a look at the results. So here are the results. So first thing I have here is my communalities table where I have all of the all of the variables here for my uh, questionnaire. Um, but for this case, it's not so relevant. Now, here's when it starts getting interesting. We have the total variance explained. Now, if you remember the eigenvalue that I that I set before, which was the benchmark of one, um, so all of the values here above one, these are the core factors that it's forming. So in this case here, SPSS has found within those 23 variables that they're all listed here and each one ends up becoming a factor, but these four one here, which are the ones that have the uh, the initial eigenvalue over one, these are the ones that are explaining most of the variance. So if I have a look here in the um, second group of um, of um, of columns, if you see the cumulative um, variance, if if you see these top four factors here, they are explaining for forty percent of the um, of the total variance, and that's why. Um, SPSS is suggesting these four main factors here from the 23 um, variables that we had. And here we have the scree plot. So essentially on the scree plot, what we're looking here is the point of inflection where in the in the curve. So which is another way of visualizing the, um, the factors. So I have here my eigenvalue and I have here the number of factors. 
and as you see here around the value of four around the value of five is that's where you have the point of uh, of incidence of the curve in this case here because the data is not so big it's not so clear but when you have a data set which is immense which when it's really big then the scree plot is really important for you to see that the change this inflection point but in our case here it's not really so relevant because we can see quite clearly here that we have actually four factors okay all right and then um in the pattern matrix pattern matrix here I can see really what these the variables are in the factors we had clicked before that we wanted them in order so we can sort of see so we have here one two three four five six seven eight variables that are explaining this particular factor so if I look at the specific variables I have here I woke up under my duvet thinking that I am trapped under a normal di uh, distribution. I can't sleep for thoughts of eigenvectors. I weep openly at the mention of central tendency. So all of these, um, I don't understand statistics. So all of these variables here together in this particular factor, um, they're sort of all more or less related with feelings of anxiety and so on related to um, statistics. So you could, so usually you would label this particular factor. So I don't know, you might want to label it as um, as uh, anxiety or something or something like that. Then we have a different, a second factor here. You see, one, two, three, four, five items, and this one says. Everybody looks at me when I use SPSS. If I'm good at statistics, my friends will think I'm a nerd. My friends are better uh, SPSS than I am. My friends are better statistics than me. So these are all variables that more or less um, speak about the relationship of how others see you um, in relation to st um, statistics. So the first factor here related more about feelings. The second factor here more about how um, others see you. Um, in relation to statistics. Then we have a third factor here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, variables. Computers are out to get me. Computers are useful for only playing games. All computers hate me. SPSS also crashes when I uh, try to use it. So these are all variables that are related with computers, for example. So you could label this factor as computers. And the last uh, factor, which are only three variables, one, two, three. Um, I have never been good at mathematics. I did bad at mathematics at school. I slip into a coma whenever I see an equation. So all of these uh, last ones here related to mathematics. So you could maybe label this factor as mathematics. So essentially, from this example here, really quickly, just showing you how to do it on SPSS, you do you went through all of those steps and out of 23 variables on that questionnaire you ended up with four factors one factor related to um, uh, anxiety or feelings uh, related to um, statistics you had a second factor here related about how others see you in relation to statistics you had a third factor here related to computers and you had a fourth factor here related to mathematics. And as we saw in the uh, table uh, before, with the total variance explained, those four factors explaining for a total of around roughly 40%, excuse me, of the total variance, okay? So on a nutshell, on a very quick nutshell, just a quick tutorial showing how to run um, factor analysis on SPSS so those are the main steps that you would uh, go through and if you need any more details um, I would strongly suggest discovering statistics by um, Andy Feud. Overall I think that statistics books are really really dry and hard to follow but I think he's an extraordinary um, author and I'm sure that you're gonna like it all right and um, to finish off with my musical um, suggestion for you in case you're studying I would suggest a band from Iceland called uh, Sigur Ross. I have no idea what they sing in, um, in, in their language. So it's great because I, I don't get distracted by lyrics. So listen to Sigur Ross from Iceland. They're an amazing band, sort of like uh, atmospheric sounds. You're really going to love it while you do your statistics and run your tests. Okay, all the absolute best. Take care and bye-bye.